All right, hallelujah. Come on, gentlemen. Let's all stand to our feet. Let's bless the Lord. Let's honor the Lord. Glory be to God. Come on, Raul. You got a praise in you, right? Yes. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Bless the Lord, man. Uh, it's good to be here in the presence of the Lord. Amen. With all you men here, men of a higher standard, you know, what God is doing in our lives. It's just a, a beautiful thing. I want to encourage you guys here real quick. Uh, we're going to be talking up in the mountain. We're going to be talking about the turnaround, the God of the turnaround. Amen. And uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about that here today. If you can put them just over here, you can put them over here in the front, please. Amen. Uh, I just want us all gathered here together. But uh, God is the God that sets you up for a comeback. Amen. He sets you up to overcome in Jesus' name throughout your life. God has already set you up. Everything we went through was a setup to get you right to this very moment you're in right now. Amen. In Jesus' name. So I want you to be glad and I want you to rejoice in that. That God has delivered you from the hand of the enemy. Amen. And he brought you into the marvelous light, the truth of Jesus Christ. He brought you into that. So I just want you guys to be happy and be glad in that. In Proverbs 24, 16, Proverbs 24, 16, the Bible says, For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise up again. Amen. That means that there's no stop to the to the falling. You, you fall, you get up. You fall, you get up. You fall down, you get up. Like a, a, a super ball. Remember the little super balls when we were kids? Those little things, you could bounce those things high and they just bounce and bounce and bounce and bounce. You can't even catch them for the first or second time. You know, and that's how it should be for us. That we fall down, but we get up. Amen. And that's what a warrior does. That's what a man does. A man, he, he'll trip, he'll fall, he'll sin, but he keeps on moving. Amen. Keeps going forward in Jesus' name. So I want to encourage you guys today uh, with the word of turnaround. I want, to, I want to drop this in you guys' life that uh, God is a God that turns situations around. He turns circumstances around. Amen. You know, what you thought was a, f a failure, God turns that around for victory. Amen. What you thought was a sickness, God turns it around for a healing. You know, uh, your bitterness, God brings happiness to that. He brings joy to that. And we got to continue to believe God and trust God. And it's up to us. It's, not, it's our choice as believers to believe this, that God's going to turn things around in my life. Amen. I know that all things work out for the good. For those who love the Lord and for those who are called according to his purpose, things are going to work out. Amen. It's going to work out in my life. But we have to learn how to do is. Be patient. A lot of us aren't very patient. We want, we want the answer right here, right now. Well, you know, God does miracles. He's a God of miracles. Amen. And you can't even explain a miracle. If you can explain a miracle, then it wasn't a miracle. It was a working of what God did in your life through a process. Amen. A miracle, you cannot even begin to explain how it's done. It's done supernaturally. Amen. And it can be done emotionally. It can be mentally. It can be physically. A lot of us just think it has to be a physical thing. No, he could change your whole mind today. Today, your whole life set can be changed forevermore. Today, your emotions could stop thinking all the wrong ways because we're all made of emotions. It's just how we handle our emotions. We're talking about that. I love those speeches we have that we talk with each other here while we eat breakfast. Those are rich for me. You know, you get two, three men in front of you, four in front of men, and you just get to speak each other's hearts. Yeah, exactly. We just sharpen one another. It's a beautiful thing. If you guys will come out and have a little breakfast out there with us, you know, amen? So we're going to open up in prayer, then we're going to worship the Lord. Uh, don't forget just a, a quick uh, uh, announcement. Yeah, announcement. Thank you for an announcement. Thank you. That uh, what was today the 4th? Today's the fourth. So in 13 days, two weeks, we'll be at the mountain, guys. Amen. For all you guys who want to come out. Amen. For all you who choose to go out, you know, there. Amen. Because you can, you can make a choice where you want to be at, where you want to go. 
I make a choice. You know, I didn't get my first time, my first year in uh, 20 years of the mountain. I made, I missed it last week, last year because of surgery. But it's not because I wanted to miss. I, I want to be up there at that mountain. I want to bless. I want to be with my brothers, man. It's, to me, it's a great time. It's a lot of fun for me. You know, it's a sharpening hearing other brothers speak into my life. You know, I get something out of it. It's an impartation. So uh, you may not receive it right there and then. That seed is planted, but the fruit may not show up. It's going to take some seasons, right, for it to show up. And once you get that season in, once you get that uh, seed in you, that season is going to come out. And you're going to begin to give fruit, the fruit of the truth. Amen? The fruit of the evidence of God's life working inside of us by the power of the Holy Spirit. So I want you guys to know that, that it's coming. The fruit's coming. It's here. You know, you got to taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen? So, Father, we bless you and we thank you for this day. We thank you for our lives and our salvation. Father, I pray that these men could hear the excitement in my heart, Father. I thank you, Lord, that as you speak to them today, Lord, that things are going to turn around, Lord. Where they were dull, today they'll get sharpened, Father. Where they were... Uh, uh, Dull, Father, they'll be polished today, Lord God. I thank you that it's your truth that sets us free, every one of us. That today we choose freedom. We choose to praise. We choose to, we choose to worship you, Father. We choose to open up our ears, Father, that we would hear what the Spirit of God is saying, Lord. We're going to stay focused. We're going to put our eyes on you. We're going to seek you, Lord God, first. Before anything else, we're going to seek your kingdom and your righteousness, Lord God, that you would add everything that's needed in our lives. We need you. We need you in our lives, Lord God, every single day. So I thank you. As we give the word out today, Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that lives are changing today. I'm receiving that for these men. I'm giving it to them, Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit that's within me. That today, Father, they say, you know what, no more. No more living the way I used to live. I'm living a new life today, Lord God. I'm choosing you, Father. So I thank you for the brothers that are on their way. I thank you for the brothers that are here, Lord God, that they're here. They came hungry. They're ready to hear, Lord God. Change our hearts, change our minds, Lord. Change the way we see things. Give us your perspective, the perspective of the kingdom of God, Lord. I thank you for your spirit that's here, Lord, your spirit that lives within every man right now. Put your, put your hand over your heart right now, every one of you. And say, thank you, Father, for the impartation of the revelation of my destination, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's have our worship team up here. Oh, you're going to move all this? Uh, just leave it like this. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us worship. Let us enter in, man. Let us enter in, man. Let us enter in. Do not look at the numbers. Just know that you're here. You are here, and I believe that the Lord has a word for you. Be excited. Be excited. Be excited. Worship your God. Worship. 
We're here to praise the name above all names. Jesus. Holy Spirit, touch every man here, Father God. We thank you. Let your presence break strongholds. Let your presence break any sin, anything, Lord God, that would hinder them. We thank you for the freedom that you've released in us in the name of Jesus. God. How great is 
just want to encourage you this morning before before our pastor pastor angel brings the word of god you know this is our opportunity to come and clear our hearts clear our minds of yes. of any foolish thinking of anything that might distract us from the word that will be imparted into our hearts this morning come to the altar let it go now's now's the time this is our opportunity i encourage you to come Jesus name. Yes. Jesus name. He is here with us now. Yes, yes. Thank you, Father. Touching Father. every heart. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. yes. He's turning lives around. Yes. In the midst of your people, Lord. In the midst of your people. Yes. You are here. Turning lives. You are here. 
Rest on us, Father. Rest on us, Lord. We bow before you. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Oh, we lift our hands and worship. Lift our hands and worship. We bow. Sing it to him, man. Sing it to him. Our spirits and our hearts, they, they cry out for you, Lord. Yes, Lord. They need you, Lord. We need you. We yes, need Lord. you, Lord God. Father, forgive us, Lord, that we get distracted, Lord God. Forgive us for our ways, Lord, the ways of our mind. It takes off other ways that we know, yes, Father. We know we need you in our lives every day, Lord. Yes, Lord. Help us in our weaknesses, Lord. We know and we declare, Father, where we are weak, you are strong, God. You are mighty. You are powerful. You're all that we need, Lord. You're all that we need. All we need is a touch from you, Lord God. Touch us, Lord, and we'll be changed. Father, yes, Lord. Have us, Father. Have us obey you, Lord. We make a choice to obey today, Lord. Is to obey you, not this flesh, no one else, Lord God, but you, Lord. I thank you for every man here, for every man, every husband, every father, Lord, every single man that represents his household right here. That he represents their house today, Father. As Joshua said, Father, as me and my house. We shall, we shall worship the Lord. We shall praise the Lord. We shall bless the Lord. As for me and my house, Lord, our temple, our house, 
Thank you, Father. The change is taking place in our lives, in the generations that are behind us and that are coming. Lord God, I pray, Father, and I thank you. I thank you for it right now. Change is coming. Change belongs to us who believe and obey. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the song in our hearts, Lord. Thank you for the gladness and the happiness. Thank you for the joy, the joy in our lives, Lord, the laughter, the smile, Lord. Thank you for that, Lord. For we know that all good things come from you, Father, from above, from the, from the God of lights. All good things come from you, Father. We're receiving it right now. We're receiving your goodness, your mercy that follows us every day of our lives. We're alive because of you, Lord. We have a sound mind because of you, Lord. Every organ, Father, in our body is functioning exactly the way you designed it, Father, just like you created it, Lord God. Thank you, Father, for the sound mind, the mind of Christ. Thank you for the spirit of God that lives within us, Father, your spirit living in every one of us, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for changing us, Lord. We love you. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for the understanding, Lord. Thank you for the knowledge, the justice, the wisdom of your word. Thank you. All of us said, amen. Come on, let's praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. You may find your seats there. Let's nice be seated in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless you, Father. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. That's it, right? Yeah, amen. Thank you, guys. That was a short one or what? <laughs> Amen. We get an opportunity. I want you guys to know that that's an opportunity to bless God, to worship God. Amen. Not everyone gets that opportunity. Many are called. Few are chosen. Amen. We're the, fusing, uh, we're the uh, few that are chosen to serve God, to honor God. With our hearts, with our minds. Amen. It's, it's a beautiful thing. I, I really want you guys to understand that. I said this about two months ago, that God was doing something fresh in, in our lives. And this morning as I began to pray and as I began to go over my notes and I was going over the turnaround, God says, I've turned your life around. You guys, life has turned around. You may not recognize some of it. You guys may not recognize it, but it's happened already by faith. Amen? It, the, the turn is already turned around, and you landed in a different spot now where God wants to lead you. You know, some of us want to land in the same spot over and over, and that's what gets us in trouble. Yeah. Amen? Because we keep doing that in Jesus' name. So uh, I just want to encourage you guys to continue to seek God. Continue to bless God in all that you do and all that you say. Amen. If you would open up your Bibles to e Ecclesiastes 3. I'm going to read. I was going to read 1 through 3, but go through 1 through 8. If you can sit over here me real quick for me right here in the middle. There, there you go. I want us all together. I want us all together. and uh, I want you guys to uh, follow. You're your watching in the back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he can sit up here. Yeah, exactly. Amen. Ain't no, ain't nobody got no assigned seats here in this house. <laughs> if somebody takes your seat, don't. I, I've heard that already. Some brothers tell me that, oh, they're sitting in my seat. I'm like, oh, I, I didn't know it was your seat. I thought it was the seat of God. Amen. I've 
Someone have come, people have come and sat in my seat. You know, they don't know who I am, and they come and sit there. I just sit in the second row then. Yeah, I mean, I ain't going to tell them, hey, move. You're going to make that person feel like they're small. Man, let them have it. So what? Amen? All right, three of you guys. Just give up your seats if someone has your seat. Bradley, if someone has your favorite seat over there, it's, it's not yours, right? <laughs> They're gone, they said. <laughs> Amen. If, if you would open up your Bibles to Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, and I'm going to read uh, 1 through 8. I was only going to read 1 through 3, but I'm going to read it all as I read it all today. All right? Uh, everything has a time. Everything in our life has a time. Everything in our life has a season. And that's why I said it's up to us to make a choice to turn it around. You, you know, we're waiting for God. Turn it around, God. Turn it around. And God says, well, turn it around. You have the authority and the power given to you. That's what he said, right? To walk over the scorpions, walk over the serpents, and to overcome every lie of the enemy. You have the right. If a lie is there, no, I'm not believing that's a lie. You got to call it out. You got to make a choice. I'm going to turn from my sin. I'm going to repent. Amen. It's my choice. Right. Amen. It's my choice to not cuss or not to lie. It's your choice. Because when you're about to lie, you know the Holy Ghost is powerful. And you're about to lie. You know, don't say that. Don't say that. But say, I'm in theta. You know, and you should be like, okay, then no. I'll just be quiet then. Because sometimes we say some things that we like to puff ourselves up. Come on, we're flesh. Amen? Uh, well, we shouldn't do that. We should live a holy life before God, a sanctified life. And here it is. Everything has a time. Everything there, uh, everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck. What is planet? A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. This is our time to be built up. Amen. There's a time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather the stones. There's a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain and there's a time to lose. There's a time to keep and there's a time to throw away. There's a time to tear and there's a time to sow. There's a time to keep silent and there's a time to speak. There's a time to love and there's a time to hate. There's a time to war. And there's a time of peace. And that's under the sun. Over every one of us, there's a season for every one of us here. If you would break this down and just meditate upon whatever's for you, you'll see the answer. You'll get the answer of God. That there's everything, there's a purpose for everything in our lives. You don't just cry to cry. You don't hate just to hate because you got your hateful person. Christians shouldn't be like that. The world is like that. But us as Christians, we shouldn't hate other people. You can dislike some things or you can uh, dislike some things that are in that brother, that sister. But that's what you pray for now. Amen. That gives you a purpose to pray. And we should pray for one another. Amen. We should bless one another for the turnaround. It's going, we're going to the mountain. I hope you guys are going to the mountain with expecting something. That God will turn my life around. I'm not talking about there's some things that you don't even sin no more about. You ain't sinning no more than that. But your character needs to turn some things around inside of you. Amen? You, some of you guys need to be committed or recommitted. Amen? You need to be consistent. You need to be reconsistent. Amen. There's always a start. There's always a brand new day. Today is that day. Pastor gets dealt with just like every one of you get dealt with. If you're in your word, you're going to get dealt with. If you're reading your word, you're going to get sharp. Yeah, you're going to get cut up. But that cutting is good. 
because you're going to have scars on your bodies. But you know what? You're going to remember those scars. You're going to remember those days that, you know what? I'm a lot better now. Yeah. It's good that I was, I was uh, troubled. Amen? What's the word you said? Afflicted. Yeah, afflicted. I was looking for that one. Uh, you know, it was good that we were afflicted. It was good that we were troubled. Because when do we grow? When we go through trouble. When we go through a valley. We, we, like right now, we're through a valley. But when you get to the top, you're going to like, shoo, man. I made it in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, you you got to do that. You got to believe that. I had to believe that for my own life. The Lord had to go through some things. He went through those trials in the wilderness. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God led him into the wilderness to be tested. And you guys are going to be tested too. You think that, oh, no, not me. I'm God. I got it all together. No, you will be tested for your faith. The enemy will tempt you for your faith. God will test you for your faith. And he's testing you to, fair, uh, to, to uh, make you solid, fortify. There you go. Thank you. To fortify you. To make you solid as a Christian. That no one's going to move you. Nothing's going to move you. Amen. If it's alcohol, if it's drugs, if it's a woman. It's not going to move me. If it's my children, they're not going to move me. You got to be sold out. Amen. And only in your heart do you know if you're sold out. Right. It's not just because you come here every day and you minister or, or you minister. It, it ain't about that. You go to church, no? In your heart, you know, because some of you, you guys are just on auto, paint, uh, auto, yeah. autopilot. You guys just do everything by. We've done that. I worked for 19 years for the same uh, company. I don't even know how I got there some mornings. You know, like, how in the heck did I get here? Just auto, you know, autopilot driving to, to work. I said, man, I got here. Because your mind is all over the place, right? You ain't even staying focused on it. If it's a red light or a green light, you're just going, you know. And that's how it is as, as believers sometimes. We're just an autopilot. We're just going through the motions. Every day has to be brand new. Every day. Can I get an amen, church? Amen. These are notes right here, my little notes here. Man, this is a season of a divine turnaround. God has set you up for success, not for failure. The world sets you up to fail. God doesn't. God sets you up for success. Amen. To lift you up and build you up. That you could build others up. You were born to be a blessing to bless others. We always think that we have to give money to people to be a blessing. No, it could be a smile. It could be an encouraging word. It could be an uh, edifying word of God. Amen? It could just be a good morning to somebody. You don't even know. We don't even know. Amen? Exactly right. There's a young lady yesterday... I, they told me that she was just crying and yelling out, you know, I just want to end it. I just want to end it. Wants to kill herself. And all it took was one sister to give her an encouraging word. And that's what it takes. We ain't got to uh, 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 do a sermon for 45 minutes or nothing. You know, give me, give me a hug, girl. I just want to, hey, brother, I just need a hug. Sometimes we need a hug. You know, brother, like, why, why is he hugging me? Not because you need a hug, because I need a hug. Amen? Sometimes I need a hug. Amen? And I'm not talking about those macho men uh, hugs, raw, that we slap each other in the back, bam, bam, like that. No, that's macho stuff for me. Let's be hugging, man. Let's be embracing uh, 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 to one another. Let's love on one another. Let's be gentle men. Some of you guys don't even know what it is to be a gentle man. Yeah, be gentle. Don't be a, a caveman, right? Don't be a, a, a gorilla. Be gentle. I'm talking about your spirit, your mind, not trying to bag on somebody. Because our minds can bug, uh, uh, bag on somebody real quick like. We can make fun of people right away. 
And we should, yeah, we, we need to stop that. I don't want to bag on people. Some of us are, are bullies. Spiritually, mentally. We, we, we can't do that. There's a turnaround coming. There's a new life coming. Amen? And it's already promised to us. It's already been given to us. So there's a new season of the divine turnaround. If you believe it or not, if you believe it or not, the Lord is laying an axe to the root of the tree. The axe is coming, amen? If you would turn your Bibles there to uh, Matthew 3, 10 through 12. And that root of the things that caused cycles and cycles of distraction in your life. Things that happen in our lives for already generations to generations from our great-grandfather to our father to our father to our uncles to our brothers to our sisters and now to our to us and now to our nephews the same generational curses are still going on and on and oh yeah we're born again and God is doing a new thing he's supposed to do it in us and we're supposed to share with our brothers your younger brothers even sometimes your older brothers Sometimes you got to share the blessings of God with your daughter. She's looking for a godly man. These young ladies. And we're giving them to anybody and everybody. They're not even godly people. They're not even Christians. They don't even profess to say they're Christians. And Bible says don't be equally yoked with the unbeliever. And we do it. We can't. We got to be equally yoked. Me and me, this brother can be equally yoked spiritually, but his assignment can be different from mine. But we'll come together under the uh, an apple, an apple, uh, umbrella, umbrella. Thank you. Under the umbrella of God, of Jesus Christ. He may be called to be an evangelist. I may be called to be a teacher. He may be called to be a pastor. I may be called to an apostle. But we're in a, so he just may be called, you may be called to be a father. An uncle, a godly man. The best usher that Turning Point has. You may be the best greeter. Some of you guys got to learn how to greet out there because I watch you from over there. How you doing? And you watch them go in. No way. Get your hands out your pocket. Shake your hands. Amen. Amen. Welcome, man. Welcome. Jeremy, welcome to come in here, man, brother. Thank you that you're here. Praise God. And you can prophesy. God has a word for you. And you won't be lying. Because when they walk in here, God has a word. Amen. God has a word for every one of us here. Today, a word is coming to you guys in Jesus' name. Let the word be prophesied over you today. So he's laying an axe at the root. The root of the things that have caused us a long-standing cycles of destruction, of fear, of, chaos, uh, of, of, of confusion, of chaos, 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 thank you, of I should put a K there. Chaos. <laughs> Amen. Chaos. Uh, torment. Uh, uh, torment. Despair. Despair. Grief. Lost. Anguish. Sorrow. The Lord wants to establish something new in our lives. He wants to give you a new cycle of life. The life of abundance. The life of abundance. And every one of us. All these things that we had before in our lives, the destruction, the fear, the chaos, the confusion, the torment, despair, grief, lost, anguish, and sorrow. That tried to ruin our lives, and it may ruin somebody that was ahead of us, our great-grandfathers, our fathers, but not near us. You can change your children's lives you can change their lives they can become Christians born again believers 
people who don't compromise the word of God. Amen. Someone who lives holy, someone who lives separate. With, with us men, I'm talking to men and some young men here. We're afraid to confront some things. And we want to confront things in other people's lives, but we don't want to confront what's at us. And that's why he says he takes the ax to the root, to the root of things. Our fruit can look good. Remember when Christ went to the fig tree? What did he go for? For fruit. He was hungry. Exactly. And when he got there, there was no fruit. And what did he do? Curse it from the root. Exactly. And he was speaking to Israel, but speaking to us, to his individuals. To us. And we got to stop that. We got to stop it in ourselves. We got to examine ourselves through the word of God. You got to let the word of God examine you. And whatever is not pleasing to God. Father, I recognize that. I repent from that. I don't, don't say, oh, Father, re remove that from me. No, God is showing it to you that you can move it out. We're cooperators with the Holy Spirit. We're working with the Holy Spirit as he works with us. He lives inside of us. He's the spirit of truth that lives inside of us. And he wants to get rid of some things, Ra uh, Raul. Some things that in your life he wants to get rid of. And some say, oh, we're, we're old men already, you know. No, no, you can still change. You can change those. You can, uh, uh, let me just think. You can, uh, ah, let me think, let me think. Thank you, Father. You can uh, show, I'm going to say it like this. You can show these old dogs new tricks. Amen. You can. I got five-year-old dogs, and my wife has them sitting down, laying down for a treat. <laughs> Sit. Two big old dogs. Lay down. Uh, suckers never did that for me. <laughs> so you can, you can show an old dog new tricks. We can still learn. We're not, he's the ancient of ages. Amen? He is, not us. We're children to him. We're little people to him in the sense of growing and maturity. We all need maturity. Because you talk to your wives, they'll say, he acts like a little boy. He acts like a kid. You know, some of you sit there waiting for your wife to, uh, to serve you and pick up after you. Uh, and you go, man, you can do that. <laughs> you can do that. I know that's respectful and I know that's honorable. It is. But if she ain't picking it up, you ain't going to sit there. No, pick it up yourself. Wash your own dish. Amen? All right, got one. I ain't getting no amen with these brothers on the, on the dishing stuff, huh? So he's establishing a new cycle of life, the life of abundance. The Lord is up, uh, uprooting, uprooting the lies of the enemy in our hearts, people. In the hearts of us men, those of us who have surrendered to God, God wants to Take that stuff out of us. All this distraction, all this fear. And I'm going to talk about fear today. Because fear is the, 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 the fruit of anger. A lot of us moved in fear and thinking that we were weak. But no, it turned into a, a, a weapon of the enemy against us. Because I remember too, because... I would be ready to get in a fight, and my leg would be like this. And I said, I'm going to slug him first before he punches me, man. And it's fear because you don't want to get hit first, so you do it first. It's fear working through our anger. And all of a sudden, it just becomes anger. And then from anger, it becomes rage. Rage. And there's a lot of people dying on the freeway because of rage nowadays. And those people are crying, and those boys are crying, and those ladies are crying. I was watching this TikTok, and a, a, a dude, he killed, he killed two people under rage. And he's laughing when they're 
going through the courts and he's smiling like he's all that, this and that. And when the judge said, you got life twice, he broke down on the ground. And they're trying to pick him up. I said, what happened? <laughs> you were rough and tough a month ago when he heard life twice. You're gone, baby. You ain't never coming out of this place. This will be your house for the, till you see Jesus if you repent. Amen? And the same thing with us. If we blow it, we have, we have an advocate that Jesus Christ amen. steps in for us. Amen? But we got we to gotta learn how to take responsibility for our emotions, for our lives. It is tough, but it's only tough because we haven't surrendered. If we surrender our lives to God, it won't, get, it won't be as tough as it should have been because God releases that. He has a little valve that opens up, and he lets that go. And the reason we keep going over and over and over it, because you haven't released it. You haven't surrendered it. You, you surrendered from the fruit, but not from the root. You have not surrendered it from the fruit. So it keeps growing back. Just like we pull these uh, uh, weeds out, right, don't we? Don't they grow up? Because we use a hollow hole. It's not getting the root. It's just cutting the top. But that little hole, you're just cutting the top of it. But the root is still there. So it keeps coming back. It keeps coming back. And the same thing with us. We keep going through the same thing over and over. And a lot of us have characteristics that we need to work on. Every one of us. If we want to get better. In Jesus' name. Amen. So those of us who have surrendered to him. Men that used to harbor uh, the ugly things in our lives, that they had a, a stronghold on us, the cycles of destruction, of chaos. Uh, in our souls, the Lord is bringing us healing now, restoration to our mindsets, to our expectations. We're expecting something different now. We're valuing life in a different manner. Can I get an Amen. And we got to know that the Lord is, he's turning things around. My mom used to have us clean, you remember, you remember when we used to have to weed all the front, all the time. And, you know, she, she wanted a straight edge on her lawn and all that. So you had to turn the dirt over. You had to turn it over all the time. And then she said, okay, get all the grass that's in the dirt. So you get it and you shake off all the dirt, keep the dirt there and throw the grass away. And that's what God does with us. He wants to get rid of all that dust, that excess. Get rid of that. Get rid of that uh, old weeds and, and grass. And let God begin a new thing in our lives. So let's go there. Uh, what did I say? 310, Matthew 310. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Here it is. He says, but even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Indeed, baptize you, uh, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. But he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Amen? That's, he wants to baptize anew. We, 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 we just had baptisms, right, last week. Right? We had about 18, 20 people be baptized. And now we're going to watch the fruit. We're going to watch the fruit of that to see if it grows. If it, was, if it was grounded and it begins to give a fruit. And the same thing with our lives right now. 
that we've been baptized, we've been grounded. Now God wants to light you up with some fire. He wants a new level. He wants a, level, uh, a new level of believing, of trusting him, walking in the fire of God. Amen? A, 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 a fire, what does it do? It warms you up and it purifies you. And if it's not used correctly, it's going to burn you. That's right. It will burn your life. And there's too many of us that are playing and compromising here in this world and with the world and its people and things of the world. Too many of us are compromising. And if we continue to compromise, we continue to live that way. I'm talking to us, the believers. If we continue to compromise, you're going to get burned. God is a just God. He's a God of love, but he's a God of just too. You can only play so long. Then it's going to be required of you. Something will be required of you. Can I get an amen? amen. We must allow the Lord to lay the axe to the root. And when he does this, he reveals the truth to us that we are repentant, that we made a choice. A choice to change our minds, a choice to simply break all the agreements that we had with the world, all the agreements we had with the enemy, with the devil, all the compromise that was in us. It's a choice we make now that I'm no longer going to compromise my life. The standard, we call ourselves men of a higher standard. We're to live our lives in a higher standard. Too many of us are still living as the world, and we want to call ourselves men of a higher standard. We say we walk in the truth, but we're living in a lie. In our minds, in our hearts. We haven't given ourselves fully to God, fully surrendered to God. All right, amen, angel. Thank you, Lord. We have to make this choice to break that agreement with the enemy, just like we make an agreement, a covenant with God. Amen? We made a covenant. When we repented, we said, we're not going to do that no more. We're going to turn away from that action, from that lifestyle. Amen? We're going to live a whole new life now. How far have we gone with our new life? Like Lot's wife. They told her to keep going and don't look back. They told Lot and his family, do not look back. But sometimes we, as Christians, oh, it was pretty cool back there, man. I remember. We sit there, start listening to all the oldies and stuff, then all of a sudden we get caught up in a, a, a pool party or we get caught up in a, a little backyard party or a quinceanera or something. And, and, you know, you're out there in the parking lot hitting that little jug, out there telling stories out there instead of talking about the kingdom of God and the righteousness of God, how good God is, amen? This is an opportunity to speak to the world. And that's why on harvest night, we spoke to the world, to the dark world, the people coming out in their little costumes. We spoke Jesus. We weren't celebrating Halloween. Amen. We were blessing the Lord with the, with the opportunity he gave us, the life that he gave us. Amen. We make a choice. We have to make a choice to turn away. And believe and make a conscious choice to believe the word of God regarding any particular situation that we find ourselves in. Any situation that we find ourselves in. We have to make a choice. Thank you. We have to make a choice in our own selves, within our own heart, with our own mind. You have to make a choice. I have to make a choice of how I'm going to live, how I'm going to worship God. How I'm going to live for God. It ain't up to your wives. Many of you guys are, are, are told by your wives how to worship and what to do. I'm being honest. We can't do that. 
My wife don't tell me when to come to church. My wife doesn't tell me when to open up the Bible. She doesn't tell me when to pray in tongues. She don't tell me when to pray. I pray. Because I've made a choice to pray. I've made a choice to open up the Bible every day and read it. I've made a choice to walk with God. And sometimes they don't want to come, and you'll stay, okay, I guess we're going to stay back. Uh, you don't want to go? Okay, then I'll stay with you. No. Where's the man? Where's the man of a higher standard? I'm going. Because remember when you were first saved? No one could stop you from this place. When we first got saved, no one could stop you from coming to church. Now all of a sudden you get a little season. You're six months old. You think you got something. You know, like, oh, I don't have to go to church all the time. There's the compromise. There's the destruction, little by little, a little seed. That's all that is. Oh, I couldn't get a ride. We got a ride to the connections. Right? Got, got a ride to their little girlfriends. Right? That's what I was just going to I used to run. Girlfriend uh, lived about two, uh, two miles away. And my dad said, you got about an hour and a half. So you wanted to stay all the time you can, so you, he, right? You make it over there. Yeah, okay, I got an hour with you, girl. You know, and all you do is just sit there, look at each other, all, you know. Don't even have nothing to say anymore, you know. And then you jog back home. No one could stop me. No one. But now we're stopped by the littlest things. Distractions. Chaos that's going on in the house. Oh, we're arguing. I can't go to church. That's the best time to go to church. I got a limp. I can't go to church. That's the best time. Aren't you expecting God to heal you right there and then? I am. I came with the limp. I still came. I still come. And I'm going to continue to come. In Jesus' name, I'm not going to... Let no one stop me. At times, men, we are running around trying to deal with the fruit instead of the roof. I said, we see, we feel, we have emotions. That's dealing with the fruit. In an in, in instant, anger is a fruit. But many times, the root is what fear, which causes us to move in anger. There's a lot of things inside of us. We think because we have an alcohol problem, we have a, a drug out, uh, problem, we have an anger problem, we have a lying or a lust uh, problem. Uh, we, we think, oh, that's the way it is. That's who I am. No, it's something inside of you. It's something inside of you that has bothered you and distract, distracted you from believing God's truth in our lives. And he's going to show you as you study the word, as you let the spirit of God speak to you, he's going to tell you exactly how to be healed. And he's going to heal you through your faith. Through your faith. Because if you hear every time he heals somebody, it's your faith. The woman with the issue of blood, what he said, your faith has healed you. The two men that brought their buddies down through the, through the roof, right? He says, your two faith has healed your brother. It's our faith, how we operate. And some of you say, oh, man, my faith ain't working. I think that we need to just press in a little bit more and believe God. That's right. We just need to meditate a little bit more. Stay where we are and quit being distracted all over the place. Exactly. We're distracted by, I'm going to this church, I'm going to that church, I'm going to that Bible study, I'm going to that Bible study. We got to learn to be rooted and grounded where God has us. This is where I go, if you want to come, you can go to my church. No, but we'll go to their church, but they won't come to your church. Just like the world, they'll ask you to go party and all that and be part of the, whatever they're doing. And we as Christians, okay, let's go. Not believing that God 
is doing a work in us that we have to say, you know, sometimes we have to say, I can't go. I won't make it. I don't want to make it. Why? You, your religion won't let you? No, that's what they've told me before. Oh, because you're religious and you can't, you can't drink or get high. I said, I don't want to. I've made a choice already. I don't need that in my life, brother. So I lived that lifestyle. Didn't bring me nowhere. Didn't take me nowhere. Been going in the same circle for 10, 15, 20 years. Still going in circles. Oh, the devil made me do it. That devil don't make you go to no liquor store. He just tells you. Go to the liquor store. Oh, okay. <laughs> go to get angry with your wife. Okay, I will. No. We have a choice. We have a choice to rejoice in Jesus' name. And the choice is ours. Fear shows itself in anger. Now fear looks very different from anger. And so that is an example how the fruit is very different from the root. And we're going down and it shows us that as we meditate on the fruit, we're going down the path, wrong path. We need to know that we're rooted and we're grounded and that as we're rooted and grounded and the tree, the tree, our tree is going to give good fruit. Because how will a tree be known? By its fruit, by its root. Some people put just roots in, a, in water, right? And then it becomes fruitful. And that's how our lives are. If we plant the fruit, the root, our tree's going to grow. And if, our, if we're a good tree, it's going to grow good fruit. And you can look at your children. And God is working on them. You know he's working on them. Amen? The good fruit's going to come out of them. Good fruit. And you're going to be challenged by your children. For the love that you have for your children. And sometimes we have more love for our children than we do for the things of God. And for God. That's a hard one. But it can be done. And God will balance your life out. But that's if you make a choice for God first. If you put, you, you, you just said it today, earlier this morning, right? You made a choice to serve God. And your wife has to come along. Sooner or later, she's going to come. Sooner or later, your, your children are going to come. I'm not talking about this church. I'm talking about they're going to come to the kingdom of God. They're going to come to the Lord of Christ. You just have to learn to be patient, and you have to be consistent. Yeah, it's hard. I know it's hard. Kingdom living is, is not for boys, it's for men. When we begin to live the life of Christ. I know I'm challenging you. Can I get an amen? amen? The Lord exposes the, the root for he can cut the tree from there. The, 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 uh, the rotten tree, the bad tree. Amen? The Lord exposes the root of this cycle in our lives. We need his Holy Spirit to spotlight the shine on those hidden areas of our heart to expose the root that are the trees that are bearing bad fruit. And he puts a light on it. And we can hide it. We can turn away from it. But God is exposing things. Because some of us can be greedy. Some of us can be selfish. Some of us can be prideful. Someone calls something out on you right away. You're, if, you, if you're uh, defending yourself, boom. You didn't even listen to what they were saying. Got to be quiet and listen. They may just be sharpening you up to bear more fruit. Why do trees get pr uh, pruned? To give more fruit. And when they're, pr they're pruned, they look ugly. We just had ours done. They prune, they prune them. They look ugly. Yeah. You look, oh, my God, these guys don't even know what they're doing. But then next year, like, oh, wow, it looks good. Amen? And that's how it is in our lives. Sometimes when God is doing a work in our lives, it looks ugly. It looks like we're failing. 
Like things aren't happening. Then all of a sudden, next season, you're the one that's up here at the altar. Like, oh, my God, praise God. What a trip. I'm up here at the altar. I've never been here before. I never raised my hands before. That we go up there and we worship God. Our, our eyes are on the cross. Our eyes are on Christ. Not a man if they, if they like what they see. or I, I don't trip on you guys if you guys are looking at me if I worship or not. I'm worshiping God. That's what I'm here for. That's what my life is all about. Because God has done something in our lives. Every one of us. We should come for Jesus first. Can I get an amen, church? The Lord is digging deep in this season we're in. Deeper than we've ever been before. And he's doing this that he could show us the bad fruit that we have put mask over. Things that we've uh, deceited, self-defeated, deceited ourselves. God wants to show you what's beyond that veil, beyond, behind that veil. He wants to show you his holiness and his righteousness. And it's up to us to recognize it. And I know some of you guys are sitting here like, he's talking right at me. I've already heard this before. So that means that you have to hear it again. My mom used to have to talk to me over and over. My father had to talk to me over and over. He was a little shorter than my mom. I'd rather take the belt to you if we can learn a lesson, you know. Amen. Things like that. But there's things that have to be repented, repeated constantly in our lives that we would get it. Look how many men are here because God has something for you guys. He has something exactly for you guys. He chose you. He woke you up this morning. Men's meeting. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, all right. You know, Raul, come on, Ra- hey, Raul, you're going to go, we're going. Oh, yeah, brother, put on my jacket, for sure. You know, Jesus, Jesus, wake up. You know, may have the voice of your wife, you know what I mean? But it's the Holy Ghost. All right, Randy? Get up, Randy. We got church today. Let's worship the Lord. Riley, get up, get up. Oh, yeah, all the brothers are there. We're going to have a great time. We're going to eat, have, you know. No. We're here to worship God. We're here to bless God. Amen? So it's a deeper season than we've ever been in before. It's a, a, a preservation, a preservation, uh, say that word for me. Perseverance, thank you. He's bringing that to us men. That's what he's doing. He's putting the raw truth on us. And the raw truth is that he wants us free. He wants us to examine the fruit that we've been giving. The fruit that we've been living. The people are tasting in your life. Is your fruit good? When they talk to you, Tony, when they talk to you, in Ron right here, when they talk to you, huh, are they saying, ooh, that fruit tastes good. He has a good word. He has a good lifestyle. This is how we should live. We should taste and see that the Lord is good in our lives. People should do that. They should be able to taste your fruit and say, it's not a sourpuss. Está amargado. Está amargada esta, esta fruta. No. It tastes good. Have you guys ever uh, bitten an orange that's dry and all that? Like, oh, my God. Exactly. It tastes good. We did this exercise one time. My wife and I... Uh, with the, with the couples, when we did the onion and the apple, and we put uh, uh, candy all over it, you know, that red apple, candy, cotton candy, uh, apple, candy, yeah, candy, how do you say it? Candy apple. And we put an a onion, the stick. You couldn't tell the difference, but I knew which one it was. And we said, here you go, brother, this is for you. I gave it to a man, I ain't going to give it to a woman. Here you go, and this is for you, man. Take a, take a bite of that fruit. Let's taste and see if the, the fruit is good. And you know, you know, man, yeah, yeah, he thinks he's getting a, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ah, it's an onion. And that's how it is with our lives at times. 
And people taste you like, oh, you're an onion. <laughs> We're to be sweet. We're to be gentle. And you guys need to learn what it is to be a gentleman. To be nice. To be kind. To be soft. Because the world has taught us different. They think, you know, if we have a big chest, big arms, and uh, uh, big old shoulders, that, okay, now we're man. Now, okay, that, that dude's a real man. He could be a brute. He could be ugly. And it could be the little guy that's small and sweet and nice. And you guys know, you guys know this. I'm going to tell you guys. Sometimes you see those little nerdy guys with those beautiful women. You know why? Because they know how to treat women. And then you get that big old guy and stuff, and he ain't getting nothing. They don't even want to be with him. He's a brute. He's ugly. He's not nice to me. Amen? Exactly right. Yep, exactly. I already had three, four relationships. And can't find the right one. That's why we have to be the right one. Not them. You be the right one. You be the right man. You're waiting for her to be right now. God is waiting on you to be right. It doesn't matter how old we are. If we're 75, if we're 70, 65, 55, 45, 35, 25, it doesn't matter. It's up to us. It's up to you to make a choice. What kind of fruit you're going to be. You make the choice to get rid of those things that have bothered you have distracted your life thus far. Say, you know what? I'm going to be a different man today. Today. November 4th, 2023. Not tomorrow, not next. Oh, next week I'll, I'll quit, quit doing this. I quit. No, today I'm going to quit doing this. Today I'm going to make a conscious effort to change my life. Because you see how the church is. We used to have a hundred and some people here. Now we're like to 80-something people because a lot of brothers are already compromised. And the Bible says that in the last days that the, the people will fall off. Amen. I hope you're not one of those because the time is short. I hope we're not the ones that fall off. I praise God that you guys are here and that you're not the ones. You're the ones that are here. We're still trying to grab our brothers that are out there. The ones that are already compromised and backslid. Oh, I'm not getting high. I'm not drinking. No, not right now you're not. Because you've only been away for a month or two. Wait till it just weighs on you, right? We've been there, you know? Yeah, we pray that they come back because some don't come back. Some will die in their sin. The Bible says that. You will die in your sin. So we have to be the ones that are gathering. Gather these brothers back. Gather these families back in Jesus' name. Encouraging them, loving on them. We're not going to over, over, uh, be overbearing on them. But you know what? We're going to tell them. And once they continue to say no, you know what? I'm not going to be to tossing my pearls before the swine anymore. Amen. We can't do that. I already talked to you four, five, ten times. And when the Lord releases me, I, I release them. I'll release them. And the Lord will let you know. But if he says you still keep on going after that brother, after that family, after that, you keep doing that. Because there's still people in my heart that I go after. That I call and I, and I encourage them. Amen. We got to continue to do that. No matter what. And some of you guys haven't, some of you guys that have been here for a long time, just right here closing real quick. Some of you guys haven't won a soul in a long time. Don't raise your hands up. When's the last time you won a soul? When's the last time you brought somebody to Jesus Christ? Tuesday night was a, a, a beautiful time to do it. Children coming. Teenagers coming. Their parents coming. It was a great time. I took advantage of that time to share the gospel of Christ, sat with people, 
Is that what the brother didn't want to hear it? I know. I could just tell you don't want to hear me. I said, but he's going to hear me anyway because he ain't got nowhere to go now. His wife's here. He's here. And, and his wife is like, yes, yes, yes. And I ain't putting it down. God gives us tact on how to speak to people. You got to be tactful. Full of the love of God. Full of the wisdom of God. And if it's only two minutes or a minute, then it's a minute. No, sit there for a long time with him. Amen. Keep watering that seed. You watered it. Now keep watering it. You may have to turn the dirt over. Right? For the nutrients of that soul, uh, of that soil can continue to grow that tree. And you just continue to grow it with prayer, fast, with kindness. That's the nutrients that people need. There's a lot of us brothers that don't give up on that brother. Don't give up on that sister or that family. Invite them to come. There's some brothers and sisters I ain't seen in about a month or more. And you know? There's an old song. Uh, it's an oldie by uh, the uh, Midnighters. Yeah. It says, brothers, where are you? They told me that you came this way. You know, brothers, where are you? It's a beautiful song. If you listen to the lyrics, he's talking about his brothers. And that reminds me of my brothers. When I hear it, you know. So where are you? Where are my brothers? You guys are my, yeah, yeah. you guys are my primo hermanos. You guys are, you guys are my brothers, aren't you? Where are you? Where are you guys? I knew it was going to be a fall off in, in, in football season. I knew it. I told one of our primos, oh, you won't be here. What? I said, no, you won't be here, brother. Come August from January, I, I won't see you. Why would you say that to me? I said, because I'm telling you the truth. I said, and then he called me up to tell me condolences to my dad, right? And he says, you're right. I haven't been there. That's your M.O. You got to make a choice now. I have to make a choice. I like sports just as much as you guys, if not more than you guys. I go to high school football games that they're not even my kids. Look at how I'm sounding because I'm yelling. My, I lost my voice by the second quarter, right? You were next to me. I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> so my voice is gone, you know? <laughs> yeah. But we got to raise our voices to God. Yeah. Raise our voices to the people. Let's stand up. Amen. <laughs> Remember, hallelujah. <laughs> so I encourage you guys to read Matthew 3. Read Matthew 3. Don't forget, we still have time to go to the mountain. You guys have put a deposit. Don't back up on your word. You gave a palabra. Some of you guys told me six months ago, I'm there, and now all of a sudden, I'm not coming no more. Why? Why? Because I got distracted. People said something to me. The enemy said something in my ear, and now he's distracting me. I'm discouraged. We can't. You got to fight through all that stuff. I just got some bad news, and I'm still going. I'm going all the way. I'm going to, in Jesus' name. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up, Brother, Brother Burton. I'm fighting. I'm going to fight to the end. Amen? Till I see Jesus face to face. That's what we're going to do. So, Father, we thank you and we bless you for your word. For your word is yes, and your word is amen in our hearts, Lord. Your word is the seed of life that has been planted in our hearts, the good ground, the good soil of who you are inside of us, Lord. I thank you for the fruit, Father, of hope, faith, love, kindness, meekness, gentleness, forgiveness, perseverance, Father, long-suffering, Lord. I thank you for that fruit that's within our hearts, within our minds, Lord. We thank you for the healing. We thank you for the breakthrough, for the come through, Lord God. We thank you for the comeback, Lord, that we're coming back, Lord. Coming back to the heart of worship, to worship you, to honor you. Father, I thank you for every man that is here. I pray that you bless their lives, bless their wives, bless their children, their nephews, their brothers, their sisters, Father. 
bless their household. I say they lack in no good thing. I say they're divinely protected and watched over. That angels, Father, are camped about their homes, their vehicles, their very temples of who they are, Lord God. I thank you that they're overcomers, Lord. That they overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. They testify that you are good. I thank you, Father, for the wellness, the wholeness, the restoration and reconcil reconciliation back to you, Lord. That we've been reconciled back to you. We've been redeemed by the blood of Christ. Thank you for the redemption. We bless you. We honor you, Father, as we drive home. No accidents, no breakdowns, no flat tires. Not even a ticket, Father, just a safe passage to and from this place, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and for your mercy, Lord, that are new every day. Thank you. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. Yeah, amen. We're going to take a picture, guys, if you guys want to take a picture. Amen.